How's it going, Bulldog fans? It's your favorite backup bullpen catcher, Bailey Pulliam, and we have our first midweek series being done for the Mississippi State Bulldogs this week. Honestly, it wasn't a great two games for the Bulldogs. We'll get into that now. First off, we had Texas Southern on Tuesday, a team that was 0-9 coming into that game. And uh, long story short, they left 1-9 uh, by a score of 8-4. to They did get their first win against the Bulldogs. Uh, KC Hunt drew the start. He only goes one and two-thirds inning. He does give up three runs on two hits and two walks, has one strikeout. Dunlavey takes the loss on the day, but he gives a, he gives a uh, three and one-third inning effort. I think he did really, really well. He did allow four runs with only one of them being earned. Uh, also gave up four hits, two walks, had four Ks. The Bulldog pitching staff did have 13 strikeouts on the day, so that is a little uh, glimmer of light in the, this loss. Uh, the offense started early with two runs in the first, but Texas Southern was able to answer with three in the bottom of the inning. And then Texas Southern puts up four runs in the fourth inning, and Mississippi State just wasn't able to put together the hits to claw back in this game. They wasn't able to string together the hits, despite Foscu going three for four. and He had two RBIs, so he's hitting the ball well, seeing the ball well. But uh, the rest of the Bulldog offense just wasn't quite on the same page. I talked to a couple people that were at this game. I had to work a women's basketball game, and they said the team just looked flat. Uh, one guy even said that it looked like the team just didn't care, looked like they were just trying to get out of the weather and go home. I think it could just be the atmosphere of a midweek game just doesn't match the intensity of a weekend series. Um, I mean, the weather was less than ideal. It was a little cold. There was obviously a lot less fans at these midweek games than there are on a weekend with them being played at like 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. But um, that's something that, I mean, the guys are going to, if that is the problem, that's something the guys are going to have to get over. They play midweeks up until in, up until SEC play. So they've got another couple of weeks that um, they're just going to have to figure it out, man. They're going to have to figure it out. But whatever the reason may be, uh, they look to bounce back on Wednesday against Alcorn State. Now, Alcorn State is also in the SWAT conference along with Texas Southern, but Mississippi State has never lost to Alcorn State. Going into Wednesday, they were 16-0 and against the Braves, and after Wednesday, they were 17-0. and So they did get the win, which is really good to see. The game time was moved up from 4 p.m. to 2 p.m. because uh, some bad weather was supposed to come in. It was supposed to get really, really cold Wednesday night, and honestly, it was cold and windy throughout the game. I was actually working this one, and I can confirm that the weather was not ideal. There was times when the sun would come out and it's still like 50 degrees and then there was times that it started raining and the wind was blowing it sideways. So the weather just gave us a little bit of everything and uh, the Bulldogs were able to uh, withstand and withhold and were able to come out with a victory. The Mississippi State pitchers tallied 18 strikeouts on Wednesday. So that is a wonderful stat line to see. Houston Harding got the start. He ended up having seven of those 18 strikeouts through his four innings of work. He did allow four runs on four hits and three walks. But he was able to come out and set the tone early. He comes out top of the first, sits down the Braves' top three in order, one, two, three. And I think that kind of set the tone, and the offense was able to take advantage and ride that momentum. We're able to get a couple runs. Foscu continued providing for the offense. He had an RBI in the bottom of the first. He ended up going two for three on the day and had two walks. So he's proven that not only can he hit the ball, but he's seeing it well enough to know when he can take a walk and get a free 90 feet. The two, three, and four spot in the Bulldogs lineup of Westberg, Allen, and Foscu did really, really well Wednesday. They ended up having six of the Bulldogs' 12 hits and four of the eight RBIs for the Bulldogs in the game. So they were seeing the ball well. They did what they needed to do. They got the hits. They got the runs. So that was really, really good to see. Brad Cumbus had a solo, a, excuse me, a solo home run in the second inning, proving that he's got a little bit of power when he gets a chance in the lineup. Alcorn State does score three in the fifth inning on three hits, a walk, and an error by uh, an errant kickoff attempt got past the first baseman but Jordan Westberg comes back in the seventh and hits a two-run home run as part of a three-run inning and uh they push the lead out the Braves of Alcorn State weren't able to come back and State holds on to an eight to four ironically that's the same score as against Texas Southern on Tuesday but roles were reversed Bulldogs end up getting the win here honestly I think this Wednesday game looked a lot better for the Bulldogs uh it felt like it was a really really slow game but at the end of the day, a win's a win. We saw some big hits. We saw some good pitching, and that's always good to see. I really hope they used that Wednesday game as a momentum builder as they travel to California this weekend to play against Long Beach State in a weekend series. Unfortunately, JT Ginn is not going to be in the rotation for this week, upcoming weekend. Uh, it's unclear when he'll be back. He's still dealing with that arm soreness, but um, that's a big question mark for the Bulldogs. I mean, 
I see a couple people speculating that McLeod may move up to the number one. Sarantola may move up to the number two to pitch on Saturdays. And then the number three spot's the big concern of JT Ginn's not there for the number one. Uh, some people are saying Kessler may take it. Some people are saying Dunleavy's done well in long mid-relief. So he may end up moving up to take the starting spot. But we'll just have to see what Lamonis and the rest of the coaching staff decide for this upcoming Sunday. But anyway, that's going to do it for me. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace, guys.